Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Raw and Write, but before we do, we just want to remind you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see all our videos as they come out. We do skits, we do top tens, we do reviews. You just want to make sure to subscribe so you can see all of our stuff. Okay, so Raw and Write is designed by Ryan Urquintia. It has artwork by Ian O'Toole. It's going to be published by 25th Century Games. All right, so Raw was a incredibly classic, almost genre-defining uh, auction-style game uh, where you basically use these big, nice pieces. The newest version, very nice. Use these big, nice pieces uh, to draft more and more of these scoring opportunities. And you have all these different scoring correct parameters. They're all different. They're all fun. Um, but there's like a push-your-luck element to it, too, as the, as the timer kind of went down. Um, so this is Raw and Right. This is a flip and right style game. By the way, over the course of this, I may say Roll and Right or Blank and Right. I kind of group all those in a similar way together. Yeah. But this is a flip and right style game where it uses all those same really interesting dynamic score mechanisms from Raw, using the same theming and the same artwork from Eno Tool. Uh, but instead of as an auction game, it is now as a flip and right. So you're drafting these cards as they come up off the table. Um, let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here's our setup for raw and right. Every player is gonna get one of these pads of paper, and then they're also gonna get a uh, writing utensil. We're gonna shuffle this large deck here, and you're ready to go. It's a very, very fast setup. So the way this is gonna work is, whoever the active player is, they're gonna have to flip over the top three cards of the deck. And what's going to happen is they're going to choose one of those cards, and then everyone else at the table is going to choose from the remaining cards. So let's say we chose this card, everyone else will kind of choose between the remaining two. Multiple people can choose the same card from the remainders. What you're doing is you're filling in these various action spots. There's five different colors of cards, and each one of them scores and is filled in a different way. So let's kind of go through those. So the first thing you might come across is the Eye of Horus cards. All right, so these are going to have a number in them. This one says 11. So what you're going to do, depending on what age it is, we have a first, second, and third age written down here. You're going to write down whatever the number is. We've got 11 over here, so we write down an 11. At the end of that age, we're going to count up all the things that we've had there and total them together. Whoever has the highest value is going to gain five points. And similarly, whoever has the lowest value in a three or higher player count game, they're going to lose five points. So you don't want to forget about that. All right, so the next category is these cats over here. What's going to happen is you're going to fill in the left most available spot when you draft one of those cards. The way that scores is very similar. It is cumulative, so the things that you draft in the first round are going to still be there in the second and third rounds. Whoever has the most amount of these filled in is going to get five points, and similarly to the first category, whoever has the least amount filled in in a three or higher player count game, they're going to lose five points. You may also see these various symbols. These symbols mean special actions are unlocked. If you fill in this, all three of these sections here, you're going to get a free one of these actions. When you fill these up from left to right to get one of these actions, that triggers a free action over here. It keeps on going down and down. All of these kind of unlock more and more special bonus actions. All right, the third category is the Nile category. So what's going to happen is all those cards are numbered between 1 and 20. And these do not have to go from left to right. These can be written down anywhere, wherever you think it's going to fit in the best. So we've got a 4 here. So we wrote a 4 in the second number. That might be important later on. We think well, maybe we get a one through three here. Maybe we'll get a, like a six or seven over here. Whatever the case is. If we get a super high number, like an 18 or 19 or 20, we might put it in the last spot. But again, if you ever fill in those three spots over here, or your three brackets together, that's what triggers the next bonus action for the next category. The way this category scores is, basically at the end of each round, you just simply look to see how many of those you filled in. In this case, if the round ended now, we have one filled in, so we would get one point. We're not comparing ourselves to the other players in this category. The next section is all about set collection. We have our first, second, and third era rows over there. So when we get one of these, let's say we're in the first era still, we look at this symbol, and we fill that in on our board. So we accomplish that. You want to try to fill in as many as possible. If you're looking at the scoring at the first age, if you don't have anything filled in, you're actually going to lose five points. If you have only one or two columns filled in, that's going to be worth zero points. But if you have three, four, or five things filled in, that's going to be worth five, ten, and fifteen points respectively. So that can be very lucrative. Also, if you fill in three or more in any one of these uh, columns or any of the rows, that's what unlocks your bonus action in the purple category. So you want to try to get at least three to get points, and maybe if you can get all five, you can get a ton of points. When you draft one of the purple cards, they have numbers on them. What you're going to do is you're going to find the corresponding number and fill that in. 
Over the course of the game, this is not based off the rounds, this is going to be a cumulative thing that's going to keep on stacking up as the game goes on. Uh, you're going to find one through eight in these columns, and then what you're going to do is you're going to fill them up from top to bottom as you get more and more done. All these categories have kind of a bonus built in 10 points if you can finish them. So if you get all of these filled in all the way across, meaning you drafted nine of those I have horses, you're going to get 10 points, which is huge. You fill this whole track, you're going to get 10 points. If you finish this whole track, you're going to get a bonus 10 points. If you get uh, this one kind of already has a whole bunch of points, this one doesn't have any bonuses. This purple area has a whole bunch of bonuses. If you fill in that top row, first of all, it's worth 10 points, and you also get a free action you can use anywhere, but also each one of these columns has a built-in 10 points if you can check it all the way down by the end of the game, which is very strong. Well, how do you know when a round ends? Well, you're going to keep on drawing three cards and revealing them, and of course, the active player, as always, takes the first card of their choice, and then the next player uh, is going to choose from the remaining two. If one of these red uh, raw cards comes out, you're going to set that aside and you're going to replace it with a new card, so you still have three to choose from. But once three of those raw cards have been revealed, you're going to stop. The round ends immediately and you score that round. If some cards were revealed, like the situation here, we had those two, this third card came out and it was one of the raws. If it was that third raw card, what would happen is we would just leave those cards there, we would score, and then those two would be the next two of the next round. This would be our starting setup for the next round. That's really all there is to the game. Each one of these is kind of its own little mini game that you're trying to fill out. We've got you're trying to get high numbers and fill those out. You're trying to fill as many of these as possible to fill this out. This one you're trying to kind of hedge your bets, trying to get the numbers plugged into the right locations. This is a set collection. You're trying to get as many each era as possible. Uh, and this one you're trying to get as many of the monuments as possible. And you're trying to get multiples. So each one of those is you're going to score. You're going to add them up over here to get your final total. You're add up all your final totals. If you score it into the 10 point bonuses, that's going to go here. Your final score is going to be written there. Whoever has the most points wins the game. This game is snappy, super snappy. You just like set, you set it out and you play and all of a sudden you're over. I feel like, I, I feel like we played in the times, all the times we played under 10 minutes. Yeah, like, we're, I, we're both pretty quick players. The box has 20, but even still, at 20, it's pretty fast. Well, and even, and, like, the player count doesn't matter. Like, right. you're still taking the... You're only showing the same amount of cards. You're still... You have the same amount of choices. Like, it doesn't even matter. It's so snappy. Yeah, and speaking of that player count thing, uh, Raw as an auction game didn't work great at two players, right? It kind of, they tried to make it work. They tried to shoehorn in a two player version because they know that people like to play at two players. Mm -hmm. And certainly we like to play at two players. Uh, so uh, the we loved the fact that the raw and right at two players was just as good as, as the five player version. It was identical, absolutely identical. One player is the first player. They get three choices of cards. Everyone else, whether it's the one other opponent or the four other people, get to choose from the remaining two. So it was very, very perfect at two players. Uh, absolutely loved it. Highly recommended it too. I really liked that all the choices mattered and at the same time I never felt like, um, I never felt like I couldn't make a good choice. Like sometimes I can't use that card anymore that's not gonna be beneficial for me, but because you kind of are working in all the areas, I never felt like you were just totally screwed when a card came up. I felt like the choices mattered and I liked making them, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this card is gonna lose me the game. I never felt like that. So I felt like I had a lot of opportunity to do things while never feel like I, I had a hand tied behind my back. So I, I really liked that. From like the scoring standpoint, um, you kind of incentivize to go go wide, trying to hit, hit all the different, or not wide, yeah, wide. We'll say that. Trying, <laughs> trying to hit, hit all the different all the different categories, hit them at least a few times each. Because if you don't, there's some big negatives behind that category. But you also want to go uh, this way as well. You want to try to hit the same category, pick maybe two or three of the categories, and, and hit, do that those categories a lot. <laughs> so that way, um, there's a big bonuses as well that you're trying to achieve. So you don't want to get hit with the penalties. But at the same time, you want to achieve the bonuses. So I like how you're encouraged to go both wide and depth. Is that the word I'm trying to say? Do Deep? Deep, yeah, deep and wide. You're trying to hit both, you know, every category, but then really drill down on a couple categories as well. I like that that kind of theming. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. I loved this. I had 
so much fun when I was playing this game. Not that I could win any of the times I played, but I always think that's a good sign when I'm not winning a game and I'm still like enjoying it. Because if you guys follow our stuff at all, you know me. I feel like if I set out to do something, if I can accomplish an objective, then I'm able to enjoy the game. So as long, even if I don't win, if I was able to do what I wanted to do, like do something, and I was able to do that in this game, I really enjoyed it. It was just it was such a delightful and pleasant game. I had a great time playing it. I don't know how this happened, but I feel like 25th century has kind of become the the hub for like really, really fun, like blank and right style games. Yeah. Like, and this fits right in with that catalog. Uh, it brings over all the best parts of Raw into a faster, quicker, you know, flip and right yeah. style game that was just so satisfying. I, I didn't a, like Raw, by the way. If you watched our, our review of it, I didn't like it, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. So just caveat there. And similarly, I don't generally gravitate towards the, the flip and right, roll and right style games. That's just not my thing. Um, but that being said, these ones I I, I, I really <laughs> like. And this one in particular, I was as we were playing it the first time, I was like, I think this might be my favorite flip and right or roll and right game. I've played Ever. because the scoring was just so much fun. It was so clear uh, and it was just so fast and, and snappy. Yeah. There was just no downtime, zero downtime for anybody at the table ever. It was fantastic. Um, I don't like playing any game back to back to back um, generally, even my favorite games. It's just not how I like to play. But there's a few select games that I would do that with. And this is one of them I found out. I was <laughs> like, you know what? Let's do it again. It's just so quick to set up and tear down. Boom, let's do it again. I I think Ron Wright is a great entry into this catalog of, of Flip and Wright, Roll and Wright style games. And not only that, um, it matches the raw theming as well, so well. And it just uh, I just enjoyed the heck out of it. Everybody, thank you so much for watching it. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, if you want to follow along, this is going to be on Kickstarter in August. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Anything we said sounds, uh, sounds good. All right, we'll talk to you later, everybody. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for it you're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.